of course, this is a story that needs to be covered. But I find it disturbing to see some people, you know, talking about it over and over and over and over again. It's like you didn't care when the allegations came out. You, you didn't care all that much. You put the generic, you know, we send our thoughts and prayers to the family and friends of Ashley Mazzaro who passed away. Like now because Vince McMahon is in the midst of this case, like suddenly everybody cares about Ashley Mazzaro. And listen, there are definitely people out there that cared tenfold back in the day i'm not putting everybody in in the batch but you can pretty much see out there i mean you see these law and crime channels and they're putting this narrative out there about ashley mazar oh new story comes out the her lawyer reveals new things and i'm like wait a minute her lawyer this motherfucker was was a lawyer for 55 people it wasn't just Ashley Mazzaro's personal lawyer. This was a lawyer representing 50-plus people who sued for concussions, and the lawsuit got thrown out, and he got fined for $300,000 in misconduct, and now she's deceased, and he's going around saying, I was her lawyer. You know, it, it's a little disturbing to see people out there intentionally ignoring aspects of this. And I want to make this clear. Kevin, I believe that something happened. And Kev, I did read in detail what you were bringing up with Gary Hart, Jimmy Hart, and Maria Canellis. And, you know, after you read that, you say to yourself, okay. something happened. Oh, yeah, no, I definitely think that something happened. I mean, the whole thing is disturbing, but to, to get down, to, was it someone who snuck on the base? Was it someone from that area that just got authorization? Was it someone who worked in, was it a military person? I mean, the one thing that we do know is it wasn't a wrestler or anybody affiliated right. with the WWE who, who uh, committed the act, the crime. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But as far as the cover-up goes or Vince telling her, and listen, I don't doubt that WWE was worried about their reputation or worried about the WWE having a relationship with the military. Sure. But I but I would think that that sounds very almost like 30, 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying, DT? Like, yeah. uh, it didn't have to, because everyone acts like the Me Too movement was the first time anybody cared about women and allegations of sexual harassment. This was going on well before. They just came up with a term and a, and a, a wording for it. But I, I, there, there is, uh, I, I find it very hard to believe that WWE, knowing that that happened, that they wouldn't take some sort of action. What would affect their relationship with the military? you got to get to the bottom of it. A crime was committed. I don't understand why WWE would think that, oh, this, this could be bad for business for us in the future. That's, that's a really bad fucking take from uh, WWE's side. But the thing that I bothered me the most was uh, Stephanie getting implicated by the friend on that. Uh, what was yeah, it that was Banner strange. Crash. Yeah, all you know, of a sudden Stephanie being implicated. When Stephanie hadn't been implicated before in any kind of cover up, it was always Vince and, of course, uh, John Laurinaitis. Anytime you see Vince, you see Laurinaitis there yeah. with something shitty. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, too. I don't have it in front of me, but I have Ashley Mazzaro's 15 page statement the affidavit that this lawyer used. And I want to, I want people to understand when you read the, uh, the appeal of that $300,000 fine, it gets into that. This lawsuit was like 700 pages in documents. So a lot of wrestlers had 10, 15, 20 page affidavits. And the thing is, if you read Ashlyn Mazzaro's 15 page affidavit, Stephanie McMahon, the only time she is referenced in there was about her lack of training. There was it was nothing about Stephanie, you know, covering up the uh, you know the alleged assault in Kuwait, and it was just really strange. Like, every, and the only thing that was coming out of that appearance on uh, uh, by I think it was name was Cara de Pip, uh, Papia on Ashley Banfield was um, you know was outing Stephanie. And people are calling for Triple H's head and Stephanie's head. And, you know, the the more I uncover this, after this lawsuit was thrown out, Ashley Mazzaro wrote this statement. She wrote, I love WWE. You all were my family and the whole time I was there. The lawsuit got out of control very fast. I had been roped in by the lawyer representing the others. I apologized that I was part of this class action suit and knew it was a bad idea, but was convinced by the lawyer. And I want to acknowledge that I should have contacted you guys before agreeing to be involved. I was basically poached. But I accept my part of the responsibility and just want to formally apologize and express my regret. You all changed 
changed my life and I couldn't be more grateful. Can you express my sincere regret to Vince, Stephanie, Hunter, and Kevin Dunn? Interesting that John Laurinaitis is not on there. But the but point is, is that, you know, numerous people in that lawsuit, after the case was lost, all came out and said, you know, look, we got reeled in and were promised, you know, I, I think of Nelson Frazier, you know, the form of Visser, God rest his soul. His wife, you know, convinced that this lawyer was going to, you know, get the money. Get yeah. the money. And it seems like because Ashley Mazzaro is no longer with us, that her statement had to have been under duress or it couldn't have been legit, but everybody else saying the same thing was. It's just, it, the bottom line is, it's a tragedy. It is horrible. We should grow and learn from other people's, you know, disgusting behavior. We should all try to make this a better place. And it seems like a lot of people out there are trying to do anything in their power to make somebody pay for this. It, you know, and the thing is, you cannot turn around and after Ashley Mazzaro is gone and say, oh, well, she told me this and she said that Here's and I was on the I'll phone with time. her and she Here's promised time. this and she revealed this. You know, that, that is just it's terrible. Hearsay. It won't fly, but it won't fly in court anyway. It's called hearsay and it's it's not going to be anything other than, you know, that's equivalent to someone saying I saw Bigfoot. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. You saw Bigfoot. I saw, I swear, I saw Bigfoot. And you know, oh, he seems credible. You know, I mean, it's, if the person is deceased that you're talking about, it's impossible to get to the bottom of it, DT, unless there's some manifesto that somebody finds in her home, you know, like a diary or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like written by her or something. But a friend of a friend and a cousin, and I went to high school with her and my next door neighbor who used to borrow, you know, salt and sugar from me. It's hearsay. It's, it's, it's all hearsay at this point. I'm sorry, and I, that's what it is, guys. Yeah, and here at, at the end of the day, this is what I say in conclusion on my end. You know, I, I understand that there was some type of military investigation a couple of years ago, but what I pointed out on Friday on the sit-down was, how come Vice, all this media, all these people to this day have never put in a FOIA request, have never re put in a Freedom of Information Act request to find out what the findings are? And I think the answer is pretty simple. The reason why Vice and no one else wants to come and get the answer to the military investigation is if the military tells them, look, we found nothing, then the argument is really, really, their argument is really devastated. So the fact that they don't know, they could continue assuming the worst. You know what I mean? I, I truthfully believe something did happen. Oh, you so know, do I. I. I totally believe something happened. There's yeah, no and, doubt and I think it was, it, it could have been somebody in the military. I just, when you see that military base, Kev, this is the thing that people need to understand too. You know, this is only a couple of years after 9-11, you know, and they're in Kuwait and we're in the middle of the Iraqi war and Kuwait and Afghanistan and everything else. And it is a military base where President Bush was there. Do you think somebody random in Kuwait, you know, would not only was able to get through the base, but brings with them paralyzing drugs and brings a woman with them and is just scoping out and see who can we go and how would they even know that to go in this room and nobody would see them and this and that. I think it was, if something happened, I think it was definitely somebody military. You don't just put, get your hands on that stuff. And if you walk through the base, who are you? Where's your pass? How did I you know. buzz yourself in? How did this, you know, this is shortly after 9 11. This is not a CSI episode. No, and also when you have Americans there, whether it's celebrities or people on the base, it's very strict and you're, it's very regimented what you do throughout the day and where you go and who's allowed here and who's allowed there, yeah. who's got access here, who's got access there. Uh, and the other thing that I found disturbing about that story from Ashley's account was like supposedly like there was a woman standing guard while the guy was uh, yeah. assaulting her, yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It, Fucking crazy. It's man. crazy. It's disturbing. But unfortunately, because Ashley Mazzaro is no longer with us, we okay. cannot get anything more on this other than her 15-page statement and her apology. Anybody saying anything now, even if they care, even if they were close with her, even though they want justice for her. You know, unfortunately, you know, 
we could all insist on justice for a victim, somebody that we loved that maybe didn't come forward, did not, you know, confront their accuser, you know, was afraid, whatever the reasons were, and then that person that we loved is no longer with us. We cannot turn around and decide, you know what, I loved my friend so much, I'm going to be judge, jury, and executioner because I loved my friend. You do not have that authority. You do not have that power. Even though your intentions are 1,000% sincere, you can't do that. It's just at the end of the day, it's all hearsay. And I guess, can we, you want to segue to Velveteen Dream? Of course. Yeah, but also, let's, uh, you know, someone was, Ben was saying before in the chat, one of our longtime uh, listeners, uh, that she was apologizing for the lawsuit, but she she wasn't saying that you know she wasn't raped or had nothing to do with rape. I, I understand what you I, I understand what you, he's saying, but uh, why would she, you know? I think that was there was specific that she was talking about the lawsuit. I don't know why would she have brought up it's because people are saying DT if she had such animus towards the McMahon family, why would she apologize to him about anything? Yeah, you know and this saying? this lawyer that's coming out now, he's coming across as if he was a lawyer for the sexual assault no he was the lawyer for the concussion lawsuit and he's trying to now become the lawyer for you know like all of her personal issues and i just you know know, like i said he's got a three hundred thousand dollar misconduct out there and just because we feel bad for ashley mazaro and she was a victim and vince mcmahon is evil and people could have covered it up you know i don't trust this fucking lawyer either and was he the one who, who I would say, coaxed or, or encouraged or had anything to do with getting that friend on that show? I have no idea. That is a very good question. Curious. That's a very good question. I don't know that answer. But, uh, you know, just, you know, we have to move on. And, you know, we Ashley, listen, when Ashley Mazzaro was alive and early on and, you know, we didn't know about the assault and everything like that. And we saw her getting uh, emaciated on TV. You know, it just we criticized her and said, you know, like it looks like she has fallen off the cliff. Little did we know years well, later, know, right? it was, you know, no. she was suffering from severe depression. Yes. And, it, and, it, and it's awful to look back in hindsight. But one thing I will make certain is I won't make that same mistake again. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if, if someone seems to be off, I'm going to, you know, say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to pull back a little bit because, you know, we really don't know, you know, what's going on when the cameras are not rolling. And, you know, you, you find out later on that this person's dealing with this. I mean, look at Daphne. Look at Daphne. That that hurts me to this day because, you know, I had conversations with her about food because, hey, I'm still overweight and I'm struggling with my weight. And when she started putting on pounds, we had serious conversations about how food was comfort for us. Like food didn't curse us out on the phone. Food didn't cheat on us. Food didn't, you know, like stab us in the back. Food was always there. And it just, you have conversations like that and you don't realize that, you know, there's so much more than just what you visibly see, you know? No, of course. And it can go, it goes either way. You can, uh, you know, it could go the way of weight gain or severe weight loss. Yeah. And, and both are noticeable. And both you think, oh, you're not, t- you're, you're uh, someone who's emaciated. Oh, look, you know, they're dieting too much. They, they have a complex about themselves. Someone who eats, oh, they're lazy. They're doing this. And you don't know. Meanwhile, it's all mental. That's, that's, doing this to, to people yes and i think uh, at some point in everyone's life i think we're all going to go through that at some stage i think you look back and you get older you're like oh yeah that's what i you know i, I was in, in a bad place you know what i mean yeah or you see a picture from a certain time like oh i was not doing good back then yeah. so yeah i mean we go i think we all can relate to it and you're right dt i think we should and now as older guys uh you know we, we can we can see looking back uh things that we probably would have uh rethought and said something different i just you know, don't like that when there isn't concrete proof, you know, that people still insist that pitchforks have to be out. You know what I mean? Like, we really yeah. will never know, you know, if Stephanie knew or if Triple H knew or something. We'll never know unless we heard it from the mouth of Ashley Mazzaro herself. And she never outed Triple H or Stephanie oh, in that 15 page statement. So I go by what I see over there. But, um, so we now talk about pitchforks. We now move on to Velveteen Dream. 